And here we are back once again for another edition of the Great Hip Hop Debates. I am your man, Torrey. Running the show with me is my girl, EIC of XXL Magazine, Vanessa Satin. What up, V? What's up? <laughs> In addition to Vanessa, man, we got another panel of some great guests. So I'm going to bring them down from my right to the left. Uh, let's start over here at Atlantic Records, marketing guru. Is that proper? Can I say that? Yeah, you, yeah that's right. <laughs> no that's doubt, right. man. Mar- that's on the business card. <laughs> is, is it? Yeah, marketing guru, that's me. Marsha is here. What up, Marsha? Hi, guys. Good to see you. Good hey, to hey. see you. To her right, we have um, journalist, author, former TV star, and somebody whose work I've read a lot of in my life, Kim Osario. What's going on, Kim? What's going on? Good to see you. Nice, see nice you. hat. Good to be here. <laughs> no doubt. Thank you for being here. We got my guy. He's managing one of the hottest rappers out right now, man. You know anything about Dave East? You heard his music. You love him. It's because of this man, partially. My man, Wayno. What up, Wayno? What's going on, Torre? Chilling, my G. Good to see you. Good to see you as well. No doubt. And rounding out the cypher, um, last but definitely not least, RCA's own Jay Graham. What up? Greetings. How you doing, man? Fantastic. Don't be giving us them <laughs> SAT. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> giving us that corporate America lingo. <laughs> <laughs> Word up. So the topic today, um, and I feel like we have a great, great panel for it. The topic today is ghost writing. So we're going to get into a bunch of ghost writing talk, and, and we're going to talk about if it's taboo or not. We're going to talk about when it's acceptable, when it isn't acceptable. Um, and, and we're going to break, we're probably going to expose some of your favorite artists that you may or may not know have had some work done. So um, let's just set it off right here. Marsha, mm-hmm. how you feel about ghost writing in, in, in hip hop? I want to say in hip hop. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, not everyone was born with the innate talent to write everything on their own 100%. But, you know, some of the greats probably didn't need the help, and some people do. And I'm going to leave it there. Then she's done. She's out. No, no, I'm going to leave it, it there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. We're going to pick it up. We're going to pick it up. What about you, Kim? What do you think? Um, I'm going to first say that I was pleasantly surprised at. Um, that you I saying was ghost writing? Oh. that the topic was ghostwriting? Really? Oh, I love this topic. Oh, awesome! See, initially I thought it was going to be female rappers, and we my first a few different right. topics and my and yeah, you sure did. Let us down today with their oh. visits, so we decided to go with ghostwriting. All yeah. good because my they first kind of go one, you know. Yeah, because I don't just like to talk about female rappers. Ooh. I feel like a lot of times I get that call, <laughs> like, and I was like, "Why a female rappers?" We always, but I love female rappers. Anyway, Did everyone catch that shot by Torino? Um, no? It wasn't like, a what? shot. I feel like... Well, it, we'll, we'll talk about it. I, I know. That was a shot. That was a shot. We'll, <laughs> we'll get into it. Oh, suck but shot. anyway, <laughs> anyway, anyway so, so ghostwriting, not to go off topic, my bad. But um, I personally feel very strongly about this topic. I've debated a lot of people about this topic because ghostwriting has been around in hip-hop for a very long time. And I think a lot of people get accused of having ghostwriters. Um, and let me just first say that, yes, being an MC... You can't have ghostwriters, right? But everybody has help writing songs. And I don't know if there's one MC that will get up here and say that they have never had help writing a song. So it's a little bit of a like interesting debate sometimes because... You never really know what you mean when you say ghostwriting. Do you mean someone that doesn't own it at all? So let's break it down. Let's break it down. I want to get you guys' opinion on it, but let's break it down. You know, there's the collaboration portion. Mm-hmm. There's somebody who comes in and writes a hook. And then there's mm-hmm. somebody who delivers you a full written song, and you just mm-hmm. go in there and karaoke your way to a hit record. Right. Wait, like no, Millie I, Vanilli style, uh, right, right, right? Like right. Millie Vanilli style. Shout, so, out, to, shout out to Kevin Lyles. No, <laughs> right. Millie, Millie Vanilli was worse, just to be clear. Like, they didn't even record yeah, that was lip syncing. That was, yeah, that was voice. all the way, all the way bad. <laughs> right. What you feel about it, Wayno? Um... Honestly, with ghostwriting, I think, like, all right, I take it back to just knowing rap from just being a kid. Like, if you didn't write your own rhymes when we was in the lunchroom, they was like, oh, that's your, your brother made that. I was there when he, you know what I mean? You got joked on for right. that. Um, I think it's a big confusion when it comes to ghostwriting because if somebody helps you with a hook or if somebody wrote a hook and they actually sung the hook, then they didn't write right. everything, but they'll take credit. And I think, like, um, like 50, he started that with Game. Remember, it was like, mm-hmm. oh, I wrote his songs, but we was like, did he write Game's bars? And he was like, nah, I wrote the hook. So people took that as that means you're writing the whole entire right. record. And I think it's a it's a big confusion. But honestly, when it comes to a person, if you want to be the best, I don't think you can have somebody writing your bars. You know what I mean? But if you're a, a singer, singers is acceptable. It's always been acceptable for singers. Mm-hmm. But rappers, not so much. Because rappers, is, you know, it's a real 
masculine sport of I did this, I did that. So if you got people helping you with those key lines, people, they don't respect you for it. Right, mm -hmm. right. I feel you. Jay Grant, you coming from the corporate side of things. Talk to me. How you feel about I it? Don't, I don't have to be corporate. I mean, <laughs> I, I could come from the studio side. But, um, yeah, no, it's totally cool. I think that's – it's really just about having that, that definition and that line of what, you know, is song making and what is cool and what all of a sudden becomes suspect when you've got people that are really – I don't think any real rapper out there is being hand delivered records, or I've never seen it in twenty years of just straight bars, and you just went out and hijacked it and just took the whole song. I can't think of anything personally, um, but I also think it's cool even for you know some more accomplished rappers. You know, most people when they record, there are a bunch of people there. Like there, there's a very small group to me of people mm -hmm. that record on their own um, and don't have a few of the homies around or whoever it is and are throwing a few bars in or whatever it is and collaborating like and i think so i think more so now even probably than in the past in my experience that that's become a cool thing and meaning cool in the sense that it's okay now if you're someone that's a real linguist and you know some asap rock asap rock dude not asap rocky kids bingo asap rock different person like somebody that's just like the dictionary on steroids if if somebody's throwing him bars and all of a sudden you're like oh I don't know like I'm sure his fans would be very mad and would probably their their heads would explode, but anybody else like that isn't on that insane lyrical level I don't, I don't personally have a problem with it, and I think it's uh, I think it's a little more common these days. Yeah, we we heard because you're talking about somebody who's so you no know, lyrical or, or some people that people hold to a high regard. Um, a few years ago, um, a tweet came out from Dream Hampton saying that Nas had ghostwriters and everybody's jaw hit the floor. Like, what? You know, he's the messiah. He's the hip-hop god. And, you know, just to hear it, you know what I'm saying? And then the people that, you know, were were impl uh, implemented or, or, you know, they say had did it, came out and said, no, that that's not, that's not the case or what have you. But, you know, hearing something like that, you're like, you know, a guy like a, like a Nas or, you know, we're her J or we heard Big. You know, have Ghost Riders, you go crazy. Like, it breaks your heart. But to the same degree, you know, a guy like Bismarck is acceptable. You know, I think people know that Big Daddy Kane wrote some of his rhymes and it was all right. You know, so why is that? Could I chime in? Please do. I think um, it's because of the type of artist. Like, if, if you heard Ludacris, like somebody wrote Stand Up for Ludacris, you really wouldn't care, Right. But if you heard the, that somebody wrote, what was the drink when he went at T.I.? Why wouldn't you care if, if someone wrote stand-up for Ludacris? Because Ludacris also prides himself on being he a, does, a lyricist. He does, but I didn't get a chance to finish. What I was saying is, oh, remember, oh, the, I'm sorry. remember the drink that... Um... <laughs> wait, 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 wait. That's how we doing this podcast? Let's go. You know where nah, Let's go. I, He's I like, don't drink. interrupt me. No, I, I, I've never come to a podcast right where you can't have a discussion and a conversation. I was just trying to finish. Okay, but I'm going to let you But But I'm going to let you finish. You want to let me finish? Okay. All right, okay, no, but um, I can't remember the, the name of the record when Ludacris went, he went crazy at T.I., mm -hmm. but it's like when, if you heard he had help with that, then they're like, nah, but if, like, you heard he had, like, because Ludacris isn't really taken, as, as good as a lyricist he is, he's not taken as serious as he takes it when it comes to lyricism. Now, when he's a big artist, sold millions and millions on top, tops and millions of records, but he doesn't make bars where people are like, yo, man, that shit that Ludacris said touched my heart. Like, well, he doesn't the, have the, the rewind because, factor. But that's because He don't have a rewind factor to me. Like, all right, I'm just looking at Lloyd Banks. If I heard that somebody wrote Lloyd Banks' victory freestyle, uh, like if 50 oh helped him with yeah. that, I'd be like, get the fuck. Like, so it's I'd about the sick. content would, it's about of the, the record. Content I would the break record. my mix. Yeah, so if it's a more it's, poppy, mainstream, really whatever you want to call it record, it's okay. But if it's a quote unquote I'm street record, it's, somebody well, can't write it for you. It being okay is relatively to relative to the, how the person is feeling at that moment, honestly, to me, how I think. But like, like all right, with Drake. Right, right. Because Rico is. I mean, a, this is what it is. is. Yeah, it is exactly. Meek With Drake, he he I ain't gonna front like when he didn't get ghost that verse that he had on Rico was crazy. When I heard, when hard. I heard like the the certain shit that he didn't write, I was like, damn. Like it, it made me a little bit disappointed in Drake because I like him. I thought that he's a. I still think he's a good lyricist, but I was just a little disappointed that he didn't come up with those certain bars that had me like, oh shit, did you hear what he just said? Like. Am I allowed to talk? I'm just, Absolutely. Go ahead. I'm sorry, oh, I can Kim. speak now? That's okay. Um, first, I want to say that when you said that, it kind of, um, just knowing Ludacris's history mm -hmm. and, and, and how much he prides himself on his lyrics, 
And a lot of people do that. And I think that's a conversation that's subjective, right? Yeah, you could absolutely. say one verse is hot. I could say a ne- the next verse is hot. But you can't take that away from somebody. Yeah. Now, in the case of something like Stand Up, which was a hit record, mm-hmm. right? I don't think it matters whether it's a hit record or not. I think what matters is how much you own it, right? So a- an artist is going to say, I wrote this record. Mm-hmm. Or they could say, I wrote this record and I had some help on it, you know, and that's evidenced by the credits. But an artist, you know, like if you don't say it, that's when it becomes a problem. If you're hiding the fact that you have help writing, yeah. I believe, because like Torre said, you've had this dates all the way back to Biz Marquis. But why yeah. was it OK? Because it was said on the record. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was was it in the vapors? He said, you know, Big Daddy Kane wrote the records. I just think so that, it was never a problem. That, oh, mm-hmm. da, da, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But like he's it was always owned back yeah. then. You know what I'm saying? And so that's why it wasn't a problem. It's when you hide it and you don't come clean with it yeah. that it becomes a big problem for us. Because hip hop has always been about keeping it real. Absolutely. Right? It was, oh, it was, keep it, was, it real. It was. It was. It was. It was. It keep it real. For a while. Right? That's the whole thing. That's yeah. the whole argument. Keep it real. So if you're not owning it, yeah. that's where I think it, it becomes yeah, a problem. Yeah, yeah. If you don't say own up to it, but I think like a lot of the people, the kids that like it's not, I don't know too many kids that I grew up listening to the locks and DMX and. Yeah, New York. Like, you know what I mean? It's not yeah. that way anymore. It's not that way anymore, but I, the people who, who check for lyrics, like, they don't care if you own, like, if you, like, like, making money off it. It's like the same shit with sales. I didn't know what Sound Scan was till I was like 19. You know what I mean? Like, I never cared if what Wu Tang wore or none of that. I just wanted to hear what they were saying. So it's like. I think it's so. I, I don't know, yo. It, it's, it's a tricky situation with the writing stuff. Well, if you go back, I mean, I why we're talking about it is really mm-hmm. Drake and, and Meek. And I think it, the thing that I get stuck with the Drake and Meek thing that's interesting is that they both think they won, I think. Like, mm-hmm. I think I think Meek thinks he won because he says, I'm this purest rapper right, I wrote and I wrote shit. all my shit. And then a lot of people probably say Meek didn't win. You know, and that Drake won and all that. But it, it, it what is the win? Is the win How do you is make Meek the, win? the winner because he didn't write any because he didn't get ghost written? Is Drake the winner because yes, somebody wrote something, but he sold more records and is the bigger <laughs> star? I think, I think Drake George is George the George winner George. because, he came, you know, because he came with the harder diss record. That's true. I mean, that's true. Yeah, but it still thinks record. I think when Meek sits there at the end of the day, he thinks that he didn't lose, that hip hop went astray because they didn't that we're not tearing Drake down because he's not because he gets ghost written. I think that Meek is standing on that. And I think some people that are purists kind of believe that. Believe that, you know, it's ride with that ghost written thing and that how important it is that, yeah, well, Drake doesn't write his own stuff. Fuck him. But I think that that is a way smaller Small. community than it, it ever is. was before. Yeah, it because is. reality is how many of this younger generation is checking for lyricism like that? What's the role that it plays today for then us to then care, not us older people, mm. you know, for the, the, <laughs> yeah, the fans to then care about on top of that Oh, and who wrote that? They don't even fucking care what they're saying if they yeah, can even they, right. understand don't. the language. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't they know don't if anybody's writing anything right. anymore. Yeah, right. Like the, all of the ki- all of these words are swimming around in codeine and Adderall. It's just like a cup of just <laughs> gobbly gook pouring Purple-y out of styrofoam yeah. Yeah. onto the fucking mic. Like, like no one even knows what you're saying. Soup. And yeah. as long as you can bop your head to it and you can, you know, turn up or whatever the fuck the kids talking so about. So does that mean ghostwriting but I, but I think- doesn't matter at all? To but I think that's where we're like where Kendrick true. or uh, Kendrick or J Cole win, mm-hmm. right? Because they do emphasize on lyricism. I mean, not to the like, not in a corny. way. I don't. I don't know how to say it, but that's when they win because there's a void. It's just as many people that want to hear the, them. Do you believe it? Yeah, you words? believe that absolutely. Them, yeah. You know what I mean? Like just as many people that as there are that want to hear the bullshit. They want to hear that. Is just like finding them. It's like I, I think that a lot of kids, and I say this about kids in the '90s, they even really, really smart and articulate. And four gone or the chief keep. Like it's one or the other. It's not really no in between. I don't mean that, you know what I mean? Poking away, but it's it's really like that. Like I don't see any balance anymore. It's just one way or the other. That's interesting. Kim, I want to go jump back into what you said about the credits. So mm-hmm. if you give credits and it's known that you had somebody collaborate and you see mm-hmm. a Kanye West um a line of note is twenty one writers on it, like a Beyonce record. Mm-hmm. You know, um, like a Kanye but, record. <laughs> mm-hmm. But but um, I think in the case of Rico, there was no credit, right? Mm-hmm. So Drake was trying to pass it off as his own. Mm-hmm. And that's where I think people... That's a that's little what, different. Give me a background. Give me background on that particular story again, because just so I got too much the, information in my head. The, did he, did he, did Drake say he deny it? Did he, he, never deny it? he never he said never, anything. He never, he never, he never really addressed it, that particular situation topic song. Okay. That 
right. one song. But right. did he own the fact that he yeah, helped him? That he was you had writers helping him? Because he makes a lot of records, makes some R and B records, and it's okay in R and B because he's R and B. Has he ever said you know, that he's ever had anybody help him with the record? Said yeah, like, nah, he's never really he's, <laughs> he's never, never taken that it. question head on. Hmm. I think it just was really frustrating for me. I, I've gotten verses from people, and I know it takes it takes a while. I could just imagine the clearances you got to go through. They get a Drake verse, right. and then the finally just to hear like I'd be process. sick. Like, nah, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, me personally, I, I probably would if we had a relationship. I'd probably call him like, "Yo, what's good?" But to hear that, you know, what I mean, to get that record finally on your album, I'm probably going crazy over it every day, and then to hear a reference record where he raps like the first eight bars of Drake's verse, that's kind of dissettling. You but know we've what I mean? had reference like, records, right? Like we've we've been we hearing refer- this from for years. Records. Like this has always been the case. Like there have been people not who have the referenced top dude, we like really like, good ones. That's not, that's that's what we know. Yeah, not for the that's from what we know because they keep yeah. their circle very tight. And a lot of times you don't know about it when they I mean, are sending stuff back to you. Right? Not knowing is what has kept a lot of it amazing. Once you once you pull the curtain back and you see the wizard back there, it's right. like Fuck. That's the Yo, I'd be sick about if Jay Oz didn't write Never Change, I'd be sick. If Jay didn't do the Dynasty intro, I'd be sick. Like, you, know what I mean? like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> so, so do we hold certain artists, like you can, is, you got to stay there. You in the Holy Grail. You on the rap Mount Rushmore. We can never find out that you had any help, any writers. I, I think it has something to do with personalization. So, you know, we bring up Cole, we bring up Kendrick. Those two write very personal lyrics and, 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 and come from a very personal place versus somebody who's party and fun. And I think that people want to believe that when it's a personal artist, what they're giving you is really from them. I think that becomes a big part of it. Mm. We don't want to find out. We had that Kanye is is a lot of personal records. I don't think he's put in the same caliber of lyricism conversation as a Cole and a Kendrick are right now. And I think where they're sitting right now, people want to believe that everything they're saying has come from their brain, their head, more than they care about Migos. You know, doing that. I think right. it's it's. The lyricism mixed with that personal side that we've bought into these characters and what we've created them are these kind of lyrical geniuses in our mind. So to mm-hmm. find out that they're not that mixed with what else are they, I think that becomes a violation. But I think it's a based on the artist. We always let the the ditties, the uh, the what's it called, Birdman's, the yeah, yeah. sorry, um, Dr. Dre's go by. We don't know what they right. wrote and what they didn't, but. It's like it's it is per artist and it is what like an expectation we put on the artist. You have to be a lyricist, you have to write your own stuff. If somebody comes back and says that we're gonna be all right was line was written by someone else. Schoolboy Q. We're gonna be devastated, you know. I think I to what you said, but that expectation doesn't exist for Flow Rider. Right. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like fine, fine, whatever. I don't even know what the song is for Flow Rider, (laughs) but whatever that song is, you know, I mean, it, it it's not gonna be the same thing that we have the expectations that He's got to give us something that comes directly from him. I think we got classes, right? Like of of artists, like we put them. In I, certain, yeah, certain I was gonna ask. Um, so then, does the question become how you know much do we really respect Drake as a lyricist? Like, is that the question? That's the question nobody yo, wants to answer because I, nobody right. wants to put him down. I, right. I think yo, I He's think Drake is dope. He has to be out of the lyricist Completely? conversation. He has to be out of it. Completely. Got to be out of it. Great song, make a great artist. Decent singer. But is a lyricist a writer or they're the same thing? Because maybe he spits really well, but he's not writing it. So is he still a lyricist, but he's not writing it? Can you be a lyricist if you can spit something else that somebody wrote? Really I thought not? lyricist was based on lyrics. There's I think so no, too, but then what's huge, writer? I, don't I know, totally you know? agree with you, Vanessa, and you're not even agreeing. It's, Sorry, it's a lot, agree. it's a totally lot of performing agree. and recording is about how you deliver your record. Mm-hmm. So true. there is something to actually delivering something. Like mm-hmm. if you pick Quentin's delivery over Drake's I mean I think it's great like Drake right. sounds better on the records yeah, right? right and maybe there's a part to it where you know people want to be more involved with some things and less involved with other things and it's not his project so maybe it wasn't as important to him to deliver something that was A plus and straight from him I mean you go listen like records like Drake is a lyricist like Summer 16 is bananas like that's just an amazing record and you can tell he's pissed off and he really wants to get at everybody. He wants to get every, and let everyone know, like, get the fuck off my dick. Like, <laughs> I think everything that comes after this. I love this, that record, absolutely. Everything that yes. comes after that conversation, though, Jay, is the asterisk it next to asterisk. it. It's like, do we know? Yo, it's crazy. Do I love Summer 16? I think it's dope. I listen to it all the time. <laughs> did he write it? Did he write it? It's, Does it's, it matter? It's yes. always in the conversation. Yeah, yes, he it did. Matters, you, you can, it matters. You can, you can hear it in what he did with the record. And if you don't hear it, no. then... 
I, I can't hear it. I, you, that goes back to delivery. So you, you obviously we know Foxy Brown has had stuff written from Nas to Jay Z. Did she deliver those records? Did she own each and every one of those records? Uh, absolutely. absolutely. No, absolutely. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Absolutely. <laughs> you gonna tell me uh, Foxy didn't verses. own every rhyme? We knew all she of... was losing her hearing. Like, I well, mean, that's you know, later that on. I'm late. talking about you know pre Il Nana and the first two albums. Like, I mean, come I on. don't want to be personally and, and, disrespectful. And the same, so I yeah, think, it's and, not... but the same goes for Kim. You know, they delivered. The records so believable that we didn't care that they didn't write it because you believed it, you 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 bought into it. So the same thing could be said. For, Did everybody for Drake know at the time though when those records came out that they weren't writing those records? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they were right. Yeah, I, think, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, Jay was credited yeah, on yeah, most of her right. her yeah. album. Few, I wasn't um, reading credits. I was just listening to music because it's just yeah. like sometimes you just listen to a body of work, and I'm not sitting there going into bylines. Mm-hmm. No, I was a nerd. I was. I mean, as, I was as, as Carter, was for you know, and Kim, that was yeah. the. I mean, for Kim for and Foxy, Foxy, I think people knew that more. NCs, commonly, you know? right? Cameron yeah. wrote yeah, "Crush yeah, on You." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Those are people who are honest about it, though. You know, yeah, what I mean? that, that goes back to the owning. Yeah, that goes back to owning. We always knew what C's wrote. We always yeah. knew what Kim and Foxy wrote. That kind of wasn't so much of a surprise. Mm-hmm. Now this day and age is a little bit different. These kids don't care. I don't think they care. They don't. Either. Care I think purists they don't. care. They don't. Think about the things they don't care about. They don't care about these people that have made up like entire like it's right. their whole image is right. a facade. Right. Yeah, they went so, to jail for ten months and they would never went to jail. So whatever, <laughs> whatever it may they be, they worked at jail. Yeah. There are people that have had like all the sorts drug of on the planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So all this fake shit, and they're still buying the records and still buying a lot of them. It's you know there is a WWE element to part of it, but that's cool. It's entertainment. So how, let how, let some of it be entertainment. How important is it to have Ghostwriter in hip hop? I mean, you work with a guy like Los, right? Who who who's written a bunch of stuff and work with Puff. You know, do we still for for some of those big records? So maybe Los isn't the artist artist that can take a record from being here to being a smash, but you have an artist like a Diddy or someone else who could. You know, is it important for the culture? Is it important for the the finances of the business? Um, I think it varies. I think he's also you know creatively starting to make those bigger records, but in terms of him. And writing, I think I love. I wish he did more of that. Like I'm encouraging him to do more writing and better ghost writing and writing for other people and like real lyrical writing too. Like there are some people. There are a lot of busy people out there. You got to think like a lot of these people aren't just sitting there. As soon as your career takes off, it's hard to record. It's hard to go make an album. It's hard to find time to get in the studio. Dead ass, you're That's laughing. I'm not, serious. No, I, I think I, about I, I, it. I totally understand. When you that. have your first album, you got all the time in the world to get that thing right. As soon as you hit a lick and you're on you're so album busy two, that you can't do your job anymore. When do you record? You tell me when you record. You don't well, even have the time. But that's what so you, you do. So you spent three years making your first album and then you don't have the time the second time around. So I'm not glamorizing it or justifying it on any any level. What I'm saying though is this is reality. It's actually what happens. So when you're not somebody who's a super lyrical like a Los, like nobody's gonna write for Los, right? But or even a super lyrical artist that is just a Kendrick, a Cole, I believe they've never had a bar written for him, right? I haven't spent enough time with either in the studio to say, but those guys, if they press cheat code, I get that people would be frustrated by that. I would still even give them a pass, by the way, because if they're delivering 90%, 99%, whatever it is, like, that's cool. Like, it's, it's really just about making great music at but the end of the day. To what you're saying, you know, we've done uh, a good amount of things with Kendrick, and we've had him write his cover story for us twice. And I've never seen anybody, and I'm sure other artists like it, but in my first chain experience, I've never seen anybody care about every word that reflects them, comes out of their mouth, is in their story. I mean, it, these words really, really mean something to him. And I think that's a lot of times what separates people. You know, I mean, I believe the same for Cole and then and, and for Jay and... You know, I think that's what separates them is that literally if it's or or the, Kendrick wants to know. And Kendrick wants to make sure it's or or the is important to him. You know, um, and that's what it, that's a certain type of person. That's a word person. That's a writer. That's a writer. That's a writer. The same person that just put out Untitled Unmastered. True. 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 No words. (laughs) True. But I still think it's a reflection of he knows what he wants to say. I I love Untitled Unmastered too. Like, I mean, I was super happy to hear those records. So. You know, that's a different conversation for a different day. But, sure, um, I just don't know if the younger ones or a lot of them that are around today care so much about their words like what we define lyricists are. That's where I'm caught up is in the writer and the lyricist. Like, you know, is it and does that matter? You know, I, we'll I hold on to this little thing of, oh, the lyricism, da-da-da-da-da, the yeah. lyricism, the lyricism. 
that's what built hip hop. Still to this day, I want to know who cleared what's next, what's next, what's NXET, it's me, it's the warrant to the G. That is probably the biggest (laughs) at the top of my pile of like who was sitting in the room and how many people (laughs) heard that record. And we're like, that's cool that you said that. Yeah, that's yeah. okay, Warren. I mean, like, remember what Method Man yeah. said when he said, um, Sam, I am, and I don't eat green eggs and ham. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but he had a lot of other stuff outside of that, too. You know what I mean? True indeed. Well, yeah. True indeed. True indeed. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all very, very, very interesting. Um, Kim, I want to hear from you some more and, and your feelings because you said you've had plenty of debates in, in this I love topic. this topic. So talk to me more about, about how you feel about it and, and what's your stance? I mean, I think every artist is different, but I do believe it's something that if you own it, it's not that big of a deal. If you come out the box like, you know, I don't write my own records, then you don't write your own records. You're not respected as... What do we need as, you for? Le- yeah, but listen. What do we need listen, you for? If performing, you're an artist, Some, some artists we just like to watch, right? Well, and some people we just see... Have, you know, I mean, that she wrote for people. Why is it that hip-hop culture is saying we don't need you for it unless you write it yourself? There's got to be someone who can write really good but can't deliver really she's, good. Let's stop there. She's our artist, and she's absolutely amazing. And she has her. so many records her. that have not come out that are amazing. I love her. I love her. And I'm we're going to keep Jay feeding you all. After the podcast, we're going to keep play. feeding you. She is insanely talented. My bad for that. What we say? What we say? He's like, wait. <laughs> she is great. No, no you, I... You, I'm with you on that. Like, I defend a lot of people that I, you know, have personal relationships with, my people that I know, like, are serious when it comes to lyricism, right? right? Like, I watch Royce for years just right. do what he does. Right. Nobody ever puts a pen, you know, down for him. An amazing, you know what I'm saying? Amazing but that's lyricist. who he is. Every artist is not that, you know? There are a lot of artists who, you know, are performers. There are drakers, you know? It's like you sing boo, and you boo, rap, boo, you know? And, boo, and he... You know, I mean, I love Drake. I think Drake is an amazing artist. I love a lot of his lyrics. I don't think he's whack in any sense of the word. But, you know, I don't expect every word that comes out of his mouth to be like a crazy, amazing, you know, rhyme for rhyme. I don't care. That's not what I'm looking for from Drake. Sometimes I like the slow music, right, that mm-hmm. he sings. Mm-hmm. It's good. You know, as as a lyricist, I think when we see these lyricists out there and we respect them, we talked about Cole and Kendrick, that's what they are. That's what they represent. So you don't want to hear that they have ghostwriters. But Drake is kind of like, um, oh, it's OK. Like we don't I know I don't really care. Like if his if his if his ghostwriter, if he had 12 ghostwriters coming up, if he's still making those Drake records, which are hot. I'm good with that because I never really looked at Drake like, to be that. Then you found some good writers. You yeah. got to find a groove and make You're good You're a great artist. Well, why not credit good? them? Yeah. Just give them, the, just credit them. No, you them. should be crediting them. You well, should why, be crediting them. Isn't he in the same I don't know. space as Kendrick? And, like, if we're talking no. about who we mentioned, he I is. Think the I'm not talking about right. financially. And then, right. like, we know he's out of here on another level. You're talking level. about rap stars right now. They're in the same conversation. That's what I'm saying. They're yeah. in the same yeah. conversation. conversation. So it's like, right. if you're going to put them, even with that line, I used to want to be on Rockefeller that I, I turned into Jay. Jay. Like, that's a really right. ambitious line that for you to say. Line. You know you. what I mean? Yes. For you to say, and I listen, you could you could say what you want about Jay. I've never heard a reference for him. And I've been around the whole young Chris. You know, I worked for Rockefeller. Right. Right. So I've seen, like, his uh, young Chris's influence on him. He didn't take any bars from him. Just like the influence. Mm-hmm. So it's like, if you're going to say something like that, then how? Well, 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 this just popped in my head. Um, Reasonable Doubt era. Yeah. Jay-Z, there's a reference, a Camp Low reference of Feeling It that was produced by Ski, who yeah. was producing for both of those artists at the time. And the hook, the beat was there, obviously, and the hook was there. Mm-hmm. And Jay Z not only used the hook, but also used the, the flow. flow and the yeah. cadence. Mm-hmm. The, now, the flow, that, that, that that's what I'm saying, right? All right, a flow and a cadence. It's a giant but J fan your right bars, now. though. No, I, I love Jay. It's right? a giant <laughs> J fan but right but now. but your bars, like like, what what the? Uh, how does the Rico verse start? Old, uh, uh, new, new yeah, money, old money. women got to keep a balance. Like Quentin Miller said the same exact thing, like the woes drink. But I could see like. I see why Drake took them references. Right. Because even the, the Know Yourself it. drink, no, the Know Yourself drink, he took it to a whole right. entire different level. But it's like, I still think he's a really, really dope artist. But where, where, where does he end up at? Right. It's like, like LeBron James. Yeah, he's going to be one of the best, but he lost four championships. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, and, and if, like you said, Kim, like, if he owned up to it, I think if Drake would have said, yeah, then we wouldn't even be having this conversation right now. 
I mean, he also says things like, I'm writing like the throne should be the three of us. So he always alludes to the fact that he's a dope artist and a dope writer and an MC. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and he's talking about, yeah, I came from the underground and I'm going to blow another stack for Jay Dilla. So he, yeah. he understands the purest form and where it comes from in the conversation. Yeah. And he wants to be in that conversation. But I think that once you once you have people writing for you, and, and I think it's different for singers. You know, singers yeah. have songwriters. That's just That just comes with the territory. And Drake does sing. You know, he's yeah. made a bunch of ballady records. Um, so people accept it, but it just I think it just takes them out of the, the lyricist conversation. Yeah. But I was always confused, what's the bigger violation? If you don't write your own stuff and you're rapping, and you're rapping, you sound good and you didn't write your own stuff, or you wrote your own stuff, but it's a bunch of bullshit, none of it's true, and you're talking about a life that you don't. Like, what's the bigger violation? You being a fraud and you being able to write it really good, or you not being a fraud but having somebody write it for you and you're really good. I I'm come from the era what's the problem, when you know? none of it was accepted. But it's all accepted. And that from era is over now, though. Getting like, thrown off stage. It's, it's, you know I don't mean? even know what's a violation anymore. Like, it's, it's so crazy. No, I don't even know. Like, talk about it. I'm not even repeating it. <laughs> yeah. It's going on over and over. Like, they're doing, getting that away with this now? Yeah, it's, it's insane. Goes. It kicks off with the corrections offer, but after that, it's wide open. Yeah, I don't even know. Everything goes, and things that would have ended a career years ago. Mel gives it new life. Right, right. I was surprised with Fetty and the Dreads. I was surprised he Yo, could get more heat for the dress. No, that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. You won't put a fake eye in, but you don't wear a fake dress? Yeah, what are man. we doing? But yeah. nobody, you can't, it doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody it cares. Matter. You could wear tights, anything. Like, you could do, Literally. like, I mean, Young Thug, he said, like, nah, this is a, a woman's dress. I'm wearing it as a shirt. And it's like, it don't matter. You know what I mean? I mean, he's he's dope, too. Like, I think he's really dope, but it's like, being dope just supersedes anything. That's, that's, and they that's always say a hit, a one hit record, right? Like that's all you need, and will it will erase and everything you've ever done, right? That's true. You know what, Jay? Um, going until you back start to, dating somebody weird, then it gets weird. <laughs> <laughs> going back to what, what you said about artists not having the time. Um, I remember a few years ago when Snoop um, came out and said that he had people writing his stuff because he got so busy. You know, um, a guy Snoop who came in, who was from the street, who was writing the shit, who was writing Dre's shit you know, got to a point in his career where he had people writing for him. I just think that... And even to fill that out, though, he should have, like, just to say culturally relevant and, like, try to stay young and fresh and everything, like, you know, is Snoop, whenever he started having writers, was he relatable at that point? Like, he's got a really unique lifestyle and a really unique life. Like, what do you say, you know, at right. that point you when write? you get... So, but anyway, go ahead. Yeah, no, I just, I just thought it was interesting. I wanted your take on it. That's the... I mean, that's just the reality of, of what goes on. So what I was going to throw back to everybody was, let's say you've got one of your, you know, just your ha ah! type lyricists, and they get two two words thrown to them, or you change, you know, just one, one or two words to, like, subtle differences. Are you all still offended? You in particular, like, as, no, like... No, no. I mean, so, if you have people in the studio with you... I mean, Big would tell you, you know, a lot of the things he said came from him being in the conversations in the studio with the guys. It's okay, she was old anyway. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was just a joke. They was talking about something. He's like, ah, oh, fuck it, this is all right. She was old anyway. And he flipped it and put in a verse, but that's what MCs do. That's what lyricists exactly. do. Exactly. So, cool. so, that's that's so that's cool. So that's where we're going to say... So that's going to be the curve on it. Where you're gonna say it's okay to have shit like that happen now? Well, what else are you writing Because we're writing about the rules right now. About these your are the life rules. And, and this things is, that you go through. We're you gonna know, put this on the internet, and these are gonna be nah, the ghostwriting rules. Credit for that. Get a, I mean, a person shouldn't get right, writing credit for saying it's okay. She was old anyway. That's like, a, like you said, a conversation. If if you said a line and I just used a couple words that you said. You shouldn't be credited that well, you wrote me a rhyme like that's okay, but technically so that is a, paid. that's a writing credit. Huh? So way your boy gets <laughs> yeah, paid. Yeah, like that's I, I don't. So that's a writing credit. I mean, that's making, super technical. Then, like, it you know is what I mean? super. But let's say you've got a you've got a very aggressive publisher. Like your very aggressive publisher, if they know that you actually wrote that, really can put in a claim for you and say, yeah. "Hey, I have a part of that record." Didn't wow, that happen yeah. with the A. P. Azalea record with Kendrick and all? Uh, and she got paid off of that song. Did that happen? Yeah. I'm the only one who remembers this right now, and I no, remember I re the whole story. No, I know. There, it was story. something it's like when you love Iggy. When you're taking, uh, we're <laughs> talking about me. two slightly different things. Where Can't. you're taking from another record, and so you're saying that it was use off another record, and like a like an interpolation. I give you half a story. So if it's an inter, they, that gets yeah, so really hazy, hazy ground. It, because sometimes an interpolation, they could just say, "All right, it's cool, use it." But if you use it in a hook, like um, 
R. Kelly saying it's all good now. We out the hood now. That was from Beanie Siegel's Remember the Days. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But he never pressed them for it. But like, I don't think you should. I mean, you could if you want to, but a lot of people in this community be like, go ahead, rock out. When you right. paying homage, when should you get paid? Yeah. yeah. I want to say, as a ghostwriter myself, because I've ghostwritten right. before. You know shit? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> no, okay, but I've man. written books for people. Really? under. Yeah. Oh, wow. It's all what you negotiate. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if you're doing something, for, it's all what you negotiate. I'm not going to violate that trust if you pay me on time and you keep to that contract. But once things get a little blurry, I think that's when people want to come out the woodwork yeah. and but be like, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? Like, you didn't, that payment didn't come through. <laughs> I got yeah. this on you. Or you breached contract. You know, like, right. it's, keep, it's keep all what you negotiate. That's the, yeah. that's the moral. Keep a lot of ghostwriters ghost are not good artists as well. That was, I was just you know about mean? to say, because yeah. sometimes there's a thing that happens where sometimes you sign an artist and you're like, yo, they're a fucking star. There's that thing that the person walks into the room, they have this energy, they have this aura, and you feel like this person can be huge, and you put them in the studio, and it's time to make these records, and you're like, okay, that's good, that's good, that's good. But for whatever reason, they just don't have what it takes to be great. Mm-hmm. And there are writers who are great writers, but they walk in here, and I'm just like, excuse me, could you get me some Starbucks? <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just like, I don't know that's if you're ever you don't have the Do you do that to people? It's not, it's not I about do me. Too. I'm it's not about me. It's always about right? you. So it's just like, they're, they're, not everyone comes with everything that's why when you find that artist that comes with the writing that comes with the star quality that comes with the personality they become you know the Kendrick the J. Cole the Jay Z's of the world everybody's not them they're in the upper echelon so for the rest of the world there comes that hybrid where people who write really well are never going to be in front of the camera there are people in front of the camera who cannot put a pen to pad so that's where the hybrid comes so there needs to be a little bit of give for those people they give it with actors and doubles stunt doubles (laughs) (laughs) Like, I'm not it's jumping like, off right? no damn no. train. Yeah. You know, so, so you get hip-hop, right hip-hop is, is the only yeah. place where you get no give. Like, you right. get... But it's all fake. You it's get so, no... Because it comes but from it, the streets. But it comes, right? But it comes really. from... Not such, really. Some it way. comes it from to. such an authentic place, yeah. you know, in the right. foundation, in the, in, the, in, the, in the onset of it all, that, you know, I think it was held to, to a different a different standard in a different regard than any other genre of music. To your point... You look at uh, uh, a rhyme fest or a consequence who both, you know, worked with Kanye West. Kanye is a mega super duper star, mm-hmm. right? And and those guys aren't, you know. And even Great if they rappers, write in the right? songs, real, or you look at a guy like Skills, you know, who, who they write the songs, but for whatever reason, you know, and they've tried the artist route, but for whatever reason, it doesn't, you know, they don't, it doesn't. So why not over. take the record? Because you're going to write a great record that no one's going to hear for yourself. Or you write an amazing record, and because you wrote the whole entire thing, I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna take 75 percent of the publishing. I'll give you 25 because you're the bigger artist, and I'll make all the money. If like, Meek Mill's de- diss song to Drake was really, really, really good, and he didn't write it himself, how would we feel? <laughs> no. Damn, that's yeah. like no. that's, that's like the craziest right. catch that's 22 right. that just, enigma. That just changed everything. That yeah. would happen. Meek writes his records. Write that's not happening. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is I think off limits. But right? I think with a diss record, you got to think. There's a lot of times when we go back. There's rap crews. Uh-huh. There's people yeah. sitting around. I'm gonna rap this verse, and then somebody comes in and says, "Why don't you change it to this or mm-hmm. try this?" Because they came up with a better word, or they came up with a better phrase, or a better hook at the moment. You know, yeah. and I don't know within that of how many got credit or you I, just your boy really helped you out there and that's why he's your boy. And I think there is some sort of thing of there is an element of working together. And then where does that stand? You know, like right. you, you get off on each other. So you're sitting there and you're all rah rah and you want to write this thing towards, yeah. you know, whatever it is or whoever it is at the time. Is Joey Badass there writing about Troy Ave completely well he didn't come today, but yeah. completely by himself? Or a little pro era around him feeling a certain kind of way, egging him on. Mm. I think that becomes part of it too. So if Kurt Knight says something for a line here at Troy, is now Joey not really the writer because he got inspired by a line from his boy who's sitting with him? Yeah. You know, how do we how do we embrace that or feel about that starts to play a role? I think Meek's biggest problem was, you know, because of the success he had from coming from, you know, uh being locked up and everything, he thought that street dudes still run like the music industry and they don't. Still? And it, and it well mm-hmm. a long time oh, you mean ago. In front of the camera. In front of the camera. Oh. Like, like, no, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Like um, you know, he comes from listening to you know locks and from that right. cloth. So sure. he comes from that place of authenticity where what Drake did or has done wasn't accepted. Mm-hmm. So I think his biggest problem was not realizing that these kids yeah, really could give a care, yeah. like right. a care less. That was, he thought yeah. that was gonna yeah. be. It, you know what I mean? 
a, a nail in the coffin. And, and for him, it's like, am I in am I in the twilight zone? Like, uh, I played the reference. That's what I'm like, getting at. He yeah, it's, it's like the twilight zone because he's writing something over there, real from him. Yeah. And if Drake wasn't, he's like, I don't get it. How yeah. he didn't violate and all I, that. His biggest thing was, I think, instead of him going with you know the him Drake not writing for himself, he should have just tried to out rap him. Cause Drake kind of be rabbited him, like you know mm-hmm. what I mean. Like he tell me something I don't know about me. Like he did that same exact thing. It's like all he had to do at that he point was scared the dude off Twitter. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I mean just one line he scared him off Twitter. You know, yeah, you it was, can't fight back if you. It's just that social media is insane. It's like I, I always say this because you imagine like the the memes and stuff that would have came out for Ether and Takeover. It's a different and, game it's, now. It's, 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 it's totally a different, different game. Yeah. So I, I think pussy is that you Earth? Yeah. Oh no, it would have been you crazy. Know? They would have been putting cats under Ja Rule's page. <laughs> like nah, they would have put, put shit in cats. We gotta bringing like, back some old beef just yeah, so we just can to see how we live in this era. Absolutely, that would be an ill skit. That's that's you know what I mean? crazy. But I think that was Meek's like his biggest problem. I think people would, more people would have gotten hurt off of it. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. That might be yeah. like there's probably a good reason, you know. Yeah, I think absolutely. there would have been way more serious with social. Yeah. But although it's a fun aspect, I do think there would have been a whole different world. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, but at the end of the day, the record is the record, mm-hmm. and whether you are on social media or not, like Meek didn't put out a right. hot record. He had to come right. with record. He didn't come yeah, with so. like it was like. Radio silence, and then it was a record, and maybe it wasn't a record, right, and then it was, and then a lot of it was just a lot right. of like that was not a writing problem. That it was, was just <laughs> a mishandling. It was all the, the beef. It was all yeah, bad. Was. He he didn't handle it the right way, and then on top of that, you didn't come with the right record. I mean, but then he came with it and went at fifty cents. So yeah, it was yeah. like yeah, know, like I mean, it was you, obviously there was a lot going on mentally, you know, yeah. and he wasn't handling it the right. I mean, yeah. but you know, the same can be said when you make moves a certain way. Like you know, I love Jay and Nas. Right. But we were there for that beef and how it played out. And there were records. There was a great record. And then there was a greater record. Mm. And then there was another record again. And it was like, not so had. great. You want to go and to that back was in the problem. old days. We waited on those things. Yeah. Yeah. You knew that the record was going to be good. You knew whatever in the record was going to come. Exactly. And we had to wait for the radio. Yeah. We had to wait for it. Yeah. You know, now it's like, let me throw this bullshit out. It's going to come out in 10 minutes. Da, 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 yeah. da, whatever it's it coming. Is, you know? And then everybody coming forgets next week. Here it comes. Yeah. It's going to be hot. Like, it's yeah, it's like, don't build up all of that anticipation and then sort of let us down. They didn't have a plan. Like, right. like Drake, when I seen, yo, I knew Drake was on some bullshit the day that he was doing the OVO Fest and he had on a free Meek Mill tour. I was like, nah, he's going to do something crazy. Well, he and had then a like, platform of a whole festival in his yeah, country. Yeah, he, right. he had the, right, he had that, then the Phillies played the the, the Maple yeah, Leaves. Yeah, that, yeah. Yo, that's marketing. Yeah, that was the release date. But if that Meek record was amazing, it wouldn't even matter. It wouldn't even matter, yeah. And I think that was the biggest problem is like Meek at that point didn't emphasize on the lyricism. It was like, Oh, I'm gonna just say all these things about you that people kind of know but don't know. You know what I mean? And it kind of backfired. Care, right. Might not even care. Kind of backfired on. But if he would have just outwrapped them, and he has the ability, like he has the ability to do it. But I don't know if he's just good at dissing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe he needs a disc ghost writer <laughs> to, bring it, to bring it all back around full circle. So, so I just wanna before we close out, I just wanna get everybody's final stance on ghost writing when it's acceptable, when it's not acceptable. Um, let's start with you, Jay. Uh, I'm probably going to be the most liberal. So, yeah, I mean, I'm cool with it pretty much for anybody that's not. And I'm even cool with, you know, even the Kendricks of the world getting thrown a bar or two when it's like a little word change or something like that. Um, but across the board, yeah, like it's it's not, definitely when you're – if you're not crediting people, I think it's a little sus. But um, but in general, I'm, I'm with it other than like the super pure lyricist. As long as it's song making, I'm not with people – you know, rapper taking a whole nother rapper song. That would be, that would be, as soon as it goes, you know, to that level, that's just violation. You're just taking someone else's art. Got it. Like, so. So give credit and don't take full songs. But yeah, but there are, but you know, and there are different levels of artists. Like if you're a pop rapper, like who cares? Like it's about pop songs. It's about being popular. Like right. I wouldn't care. Steal like the dance moves, 40. take it all. Like who cares? Like go for it. Got it. Wayno, well, talk to me. Um, I think it's cool, but you can't say that you're the best. Like, you can't claim to be the best dude in the game or the, the top dude in the game, and you have people helping you. You know what I mean? Which which your bars? I know you know we spoke a lot about Drake, and I may not know this, but I mean he takes that song right. It seems like he takes that song right and approach to everything he does. So that may just be his twist, but I don't think you're the best rapper if you got. Eight bars out of sixteen written for you. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's I wanted to clear up one thing though, Wayno. As soon as you're taking the flow, 
that's ghostwriting too. That's you know when you're like, oh, as soon as you're taking a cadence or a flow, to me that's a ghostwriter. Like, so you're saying what, that Jay Z got, got has gotten on, ghostwritten for? When that's I'm what you're working, saying. No, 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 I'm not paying. <laughs> that's on what you're saying. Place. So, so yes, fine, okay. cool. But at the same point, what I'm saying is, there's nothing. I'm saying there's nothing wrong with that though. Okay. That was like, but, but it is what like it is. Jay, I'm super cool. Yo, he's. Come on, he's killing the game. Like, yeah, let him. Like, wow, so, catch a flow. Hy- hypothetical sure. question. So if, song making. if you're on a song with somebody and they have a flow and you go with their flow of the song. Mm. That happens all the time. It happens all the time. Guys trade records back and forth. You hear your man's verse, whoever your feature is, yeah. and they go back and they recut their verse. And That's Ghost Rider? And they the flow. Or they even one up their other verse, and then it goes That's back, cheating. and then so was you, so so, no so, so with the easy with verse. that that easy fact song is he ghost right is he biting like I mean he deliberately bit from right. Drake and so is that ghost writing as well? That's the interesting. That's the interesting. It's just point. it's too much for me, Grant's man. I feel like yes. the, you know the math scene and, writing, and Hangover. Writing. I feel like that. Like, <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, it's like what's it's like Goodwill Hunting when he's in the hallway. Yeah, <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, what I'm saying is two different things. I'm not talking about hearing another song and taking that flow and using that flow. I'm talking about when. We have a song demo, and somebody's on there cutting a reference, going, blah, 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 like doing slurry. Yeah, words. I got like, you on that. Literally, up. like when you do slur word voice mm-hmm. demo, like you're laying down a cadence and a swag for somebody to deliver, and they make producers do that. Producers come with a beat and already have a cadence and a flow Absolutely. on it. Mm. That's true. So yeah. you're still an amazing rapper, though. Absolutely, I agree. I'm so with all that. I'm with the writing. I'm just saying, I would call that that's writing, just because as soon as it's a sound. Part of delivery of a song is how you sound. It's on part the of the writing. Yeah, pro- yeah that's a it's conversation. like eighty percent of because all all these dudes rap either like the Migos or like that old Wiz, Wiz Khalifa flow that like that red hat with that blue brim, blue <laughs> brim with that red hat. Like you know what I mean? Like Wiz said something really <laughs> interesting um, during our last interview. He said that I'm all for the ghostwriting because sometimes people have a vision for you bigger than what you see for yourself. Mm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some of his biggest records came to him. You know, he Who just had that? the... Wiz Khalifa. Mm. Well, he just had to insert eight bars here, four bars here, you yeah, know, but yeah. the record was already... Never eight or four already, bars. <laughs> never eight never four. insert eight or four <laughs> bars. Let's <laughs> let's take it easy. And full disclosure, <laughs> Wiz so, is my artist. Right. I love him. So we're not going to say that Wiz has inserted four or eight bars well, this, I'm record. telling you... I'm just... I'm just, I just I'm just saying, when, we're uh, not going to go with four or eight bars. No, I get That's it. all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Back to protect your point, your artists, though. Protect your artists. Protect your artists. It's all good. Not, <laughs> on my watch. Can't yeah. talk about Sia. Can't talk yeah. about Wynn. You know what? We're going to get all these industry people about <laughs> here. Right. Kim, talk to me. What's your take? Uh, my take is that um, being a writer and being a performing artist are two different things. They're two different art forms. There are some people who can't do both, and there are some people who do both really well. And in hip-hop, I think that the people who do both really well are the ones who are the most successful and the most respected. If you look at the ones that are, that's that's the answer in a lot of ways. Yeah. Mm. But clearly you're cool with ghostwriting because you've ghostwritten full books. Listen, I, I didn't say... <laughs> we got I it. said I've ghostwritten before. Full books. Right? <laughs> Your books, whole autobiography. Books, Both. articles, <laughs> like a lot. There have been a lot of things, wow. you know? And so, you know, that money up. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Marsha, where's Khalifa aside? <laughs> Talk to me about ghostwriting. Oh, just generally yo, that, speaking. But Lupe told me the same thing. He was like, yo, they would bring me the record done. And it was just like, yo, put your verse in here. The song is already, we know what we're going to do. We're going to, how we're going to market it, whatever, whatever. That's a, You've heard another. that many times, though. What's You've been, wrong and with then so and so's going to get on no, here. Not every, like, it's like Lupe. sometimes you bring a record, right? It's a track, right? The beat, and then there's a hook. Because a lot of people can't write a hook. Right. Like, they yeah. can write, the they can give you 712 bars all day. That's the record. That's not always the record. That's the record. That's not always the, the record. Hard, the hardest part of the game is, making, is a hook. making a hook the, on a song. The great record. Hot nigga didn't have a hook. It was the a great was record. The, the hook was the week ago. It didn't have a hook. It didn't have a hook. It didn't have a hook. It had a punchline. That's the line, exception to the rule. The We're getting way off topic. That's, that's that record didn't really have a traditional hook. I'm nominated for a Grammy, you know? I'm just saying. All right, so what's your take? What? 
Oh, <laughs> what, are we, what are we here for again? Um, I think it's about, about where you want your legacy to be at the end of the day. If you want to be in that category of the upper echelon of artists, you just can't use these cheat codes. There are There's a very fine line between I'm in a space with somebody and I, people are my muse and they inspire me with their conversation and things that are happening around me and somebody literally writing my bars. If you want to be you know, one of the greats, you can't use a cheat code. If you're down to use a cheat code, you can still be great, but you're not going to be the, you know, in that super, that goat category. You can't be a goat when other people are writing your rhymes. Right. You a sheep. That's all. Damn it. <laughs> bueno, coming from your Rockefeller days before we close out, yeah. um, what do we what do we put Memphis Bleak in the category of MCs? <laughs> and, what is everybody laughing? Come on, man. Just because the random tangents are hilarious. The random tangents are hilarious. Bring a mellow <laughs> while we at it, right? What, what kind of podcast would this be if we didn't close with Bleak? No, because nah, um, I think, uh, Jay wrote yeah. the coming of age verse. Yeah, he did. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. that's public knowledge. It is. People don't ever look at Bleak and say, yo, he's not a real MC or whatever. But Jay brought the record to him and he was like, rap this. Without me being biased, I really don't know how people really look at Bleak. Like it's it's a funny space where you know where Bleak is held in this hip hop Hall of Fame thing. But I think he still makes it. Like he's like uh, somebody that was on the team, definitely. Um, I don't know, man. Like he's not in your top ten. <laughs> no, he's not Bleak in your is, top ten. Is that what Bleak, I love you, Bleak. Bleak, I love you. Are you saying he's in your top ten? No, listen, listen no, Bleak is not. Bleak is not in my top ten. <laughs> he's not in my top ten. But I do think you know he did have his moments. You know, early on, very early on when he had his first, like, two albums. He did have an impact. Like, this is before I met them. They had an impact on my youth. I was a teenager listening to them. Of course. You know what I mean? So I, I do think he has his moments, but um, I don't know where he ranks. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just popped in my head. I'm sorry if I yeah, you threw everybody You put him on a spot. You put him on a spot. that your chick, too, though? That was Jay's record. That was Jay's record. He just, but he, all he did was he, he just threw, he kept his verses on it, and like right. we said, like, let me, let, I mean, me, let, let Bleak, Jump in on it, yeah. You absolutely, know what I mean? absolutely. No doubt, no doubt. V, let's uh, let's close out. Talk to me. I don't know what to say about Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Yo, no shots, yeah. <laughs> no Big shots, shots to Brooklyn. No coming. shots to Bleak no at shots all. Shots to Bleak. Five, three, Things four. just pop in my head. I'm sorry, Vanessa. Your take on on ghostwriting and and where we are in 2016 with everything. I don't give a fuck. You don't care? No, I mean I do. You know, it's just it's it's uh, you know I want to know if it was ghostwritten kind of thing. I want to be able to judge off of that. Do, I think I should that, be able to know. Does that change the rating in the XXL magazine if somebody's goes right in the shit? good question. I don't know. Hmm. It depends on the overall project. You know? I mean, I'm sure there are verses. Lyrics, right? I would assume there are verses that Kanye have done that he hasn't written himself, you know? And I believe we've given him some double XL. so I'm not really sure. You know, it's it's a, it's a I think it's individually what you expect as a fan from that artist in a lot of ways. It seems like we all have similar answers, but we all have different expectations from different people. Right. So I think it's a case by case basis, but I don't think it has the emphasis it used to have as importance. Yeah, you know, and 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 that there's an older generation that looks back and goes, I don't really understand why that's not important anymore. But um, there's a lot of things I don't think that they understand or we understand. Yeah, yeah, no, the game is is definitely changed. Um, me as a fan, as a purist, you know, ghostwriting is is taboo. Um, it takes you out of the conversation of best lyricist, goat, or whatever. Um, but if a dope song comes out of it, I mean, like I said, I listen to enough Foxy Kim and, and a bunch of other artists that I'm like, yo, this is dope, whether they wrote it or not. So mm-hmm. let's you know. stop think, singling out the females for the ghost writing. <laughs> well, Come on now. Saying, Come on now. It's a lot Sorry. of ghosts, there's a lot of ghost writing going on. Right, right, right. For everybody. <laughs> so let's throw Kanye and Bismarcky in there. I mean, everybody well. always says something like da 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 and they're like, Well, they didn't write that. And we're like, Well, how do you know? Like, who knows? You know, like, how do you, everyone's always saying, well, he didn't write that. Well, they didn't write that. And I'm like, well, no, I mean, like, I, I didn't know that. How do you Is know? everybody in this How room does everybody know everything? And, love you know, Will Smith, time? Summertime? There's rumors he didn't write that. It's yeah. still a, love that a record. great record. Love that yeah. record. My summer don't start until right? I hear that record. Love Damn that record. it. <laughs> Every Listen, summer. man, we're going to close out. Thank you all for being here. Marsha, Kim, Wayno, and Jay Grand. Uh, on behalf of myself, Double XL, Vanessa Sad, and I'm Torre. Make sure you catch me on Sirius XM Hip Hop Nation. we about to close out the great hip hop debate. Thank you guys for being here. Peace and love. Peace.